Coming up today on the Seahawks Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle, we'll highlight a couple of games at home for UNCW against the Delaware Blue Hens. We'll have those highlights and the comments for the coach as well. We'll also have a day in the life of a Seahawk. Jalen Sims will show us that later on. Our Logan Holmes Play of the Week, the Player of the Week, and we'll preview this weekend's games at home against the Hofstra Pride, the preseason number one pick to win this league. It's the Seahawks and the Pride. We'll have that coming up next. Stay with us. It's the Seahawks Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle rolling right now. Well, hello and welcome everybody. Mike McCarroll here alongside Takeo Siddle talking Seahawk basketball once again here this week. We're going to recap a couple of games at home for the Seahawks as they're well into conference play now, Coach. And you have your first conference games at home over the weekend against a very good Delaware team. Preseason number two pick coming in. Let's talk about the Saturday game here first. So you're coming off of the two setbacks on the road at Towson getting ready for this game. What was it like getting ready for your home opener in conference play? You know, Mike, what we wanted to do going into the game was make adjustments from uh, when we played Towson early on uh, that previous week. So we wanted to make adjustments. I didn't think we shared the ball particularly well in you know, that two-game stretch up at Towson. So we wanted to talk about that, address it, work on it, get better at it, and I think we did um, You know, in the first game against uh, Delaware. Yeah, 10 assists in this game led to the 30 made baskets, you shoot 50% as well, so you struggled on the road, you came back here. In your mind, what was the difference in it, your percentage really going up in this game? Shot selection. You know, I thought we uh, drove and when guys converged on us, we kicked it to the wide open man, which we all know those are easier shots for us to make versus a contested shot off the dribble. Uh, so we really wanted to lock in on that. I thought we did a really good job executing that game plan offensively uh, on Saturday. Delaware certainly with some size, Dylan Painter a big day on the glass, but I thought at the end you got some key rebounds to help secure this victory on Saturday. Yeah, that's, that's something that we have to continue to improve on, but uh, we got big rebounds at the end of that game to, to seal the win. And again, you look at this game and your decision here, you bring Sims off the bench, played well. As you said, shot selection really good on Saturday. Yeah, he did a good job. You know, he came off the bench, he played with a little bit more poise and uh, took the shots that were presented to him, uh, made the game a little bit easier for him, but he rebounded as well, um, you know, and got some easy stick backs, and, uh, you know, he did a really good job in the middle of that zone, so he did a really good job coming off the bench. Again, at Towson, you were right there at the end of the game. Unfortunately, it didn't go your way, but here you were able to finish it, end the game on a 13-2 run. What did you learn about your team? Maybe what did they learn about themselves able to finish in this game? They were capable of doing it. You know, I, I was talking to some, uh, some people early on. Um, it's like, you know, we're asking them to win the game twice because we're getting to the point where this program uh, is in a winning position. Now, um, the challenge for us is to go ahead and finish those games and win them. Uh, so we're asking them to win it twice, which is hard for this group right now, but we're taking steps forward and, and we're going to get over the hump. Well, certainly got over the hump on Saturday against the Blue Hens from Delaware. Let's take a look now at our Harris Teeter highlights. A little slow start here as well. Now steal for Harvey on the far sideline. Drives it in. The layup is good. High percentage shot for the freshman. Off the gas now. Ten on the shot. Get out to Sims. Sims pulls up inside the arc and rattles in the shot. Backs it away to Bridget. Eat on the shot clock. Bridget the defense of Navakavichetti will score and Sims his left shoulder to Bob. Gaps right, drives it left, redirects to avoid contact and lays it in. And Bridget and UFCW left to Sims. Sims pulls up 15 and knocks it in. Seahawks trailing by five. Carl getting a screen to Dodd. Back on the floor here. Carl will drive, attacks Painter, backs it in with the left hand. They're seeing something here as they're able to get down the hill against the Delaware defense up the way. Carter under hands to Sims. Three from the wing is all in for Jalen Sims. The ball gets it back by the three on the way is good. Fade the way as well for Sims. Coming away with it, Okaru. Down the far sideline to the trailer. Boggs beat set. Three on for Boggs. The block on one end. 
The three on the other. Harvey on the drive. On the is good. I don't know if he knew if that was going to be a shot or a pass to Boggs. Two. Back to a four-point C line lead. O'Carroll will drive in. O'Carroll flips it off the glass and scores. O'Carroll nine on the shot. Sim, Sim turn around, jump shot. Ten is all net. First points of the second half for the junior out of Charlotte. Jalen Sim eyes up. Drives it into the right corner with a pass to Gaston. The three is all net for Ty Gaston. Lobbing it to Bridget. Bridget short with it, but gets his missing. Reverse lamp is good for Joe Bridget. It went out of reach of O'Connor with the left elbow to Sims, and Sims will knock it in once again. So that now run right side Gaston and the right elbow to Sims. Sims pulls up from 10 and hits it again. So they consistently. UNCW gets the win 77 to 70. The final score there, their first conference win of the season, just a third conference game for UNCW. Coach, uh, again, very good performances here for UNCW. 22 off the bench for Jalen Sims. You get 20 from Michael Caru as well. Overall, four guys in double figures. And as you said, 10 assists leading to the 30 made baskets. Certainly that number was higher than it had been and your message got through to your kids. It did, they, uh, you know, guys, they were locked in. I could tell um, they were locked in and we had a game plan and they went out and executed on both ends of the floor. It wasn't perfect. Uh, we made some mistakes, but I thought we did the right thing more times than not in that game. You turned over Delaware, 17 turnovers. Some of them led to fast break points, 24 fast break points. Certainly, that is Seahawk basketball right now. It has to be a part of who we are. Um, you know, when you talk about you're breaking down your offense, how you're going to score, you know, creating offense from our defense is, is huge for us. And, you know, if we can defend and uh, get some stops to get out and run, you know, I think that makes us a better team. Yeah, certainly was on Saturday. Again, the Seahawks as a team shoot 50% in this game and they get the victory 77 to 70. The final score, UNCW over Delaware the Saturday afternoon game in Trash Coliseum. We'll take a break here. When we get back, we'll talk about the Sunday afternoon game, back-to-back -back games for both these teams in conference play. Certainly interesting, to say the least. We'll have those highlights coming up next. Stay with us. In the truck game, greatness is defined by a relentless commitment to the customer, forged over decades, built by a team resolute in helping you achieve your greatness. Experience this award-winning lineup today. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years straight and counting. Now get a well-equipped 2020 F-150 with up to 10,531 in total savings, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Produce at the peak of freshness. That's what you'll find at Harris Teeter's Farmer's Market. At this moment, we're gathering the best produce from across America and bringing it to you. We're inspecting for freshness in the fields, on the trucks, and in our stores. Harris Teeter. What are you waiting for? We do fresh the best. Along the coast of North Carolina lies one of the best universities in the Southeast, the University of North Carolina Wilmington. UNC Wilmington, giving flight to imagination. So UNCW gets the win on Saturday afternoon, right back at it Sunday afternoon. And, and Coach, before we talk about the game, what was the prep like? You know, at Towson, you're coming off of a, a loss, so maybe you make some adjustments. What was your prep like, and how many adjustments were you trying to make going from a, a win on Saturday to another game on Sunday? Yeah, we wanted to tweak a few things on both ends of the floor. I, I knew that they would uh, make an adjustment because I thought offensively um, we gave them problems. You know, we, uh, we drove when we got to the paint. You know, their big guy couldn't really stay in front of us on the, you know, our pick and roll. So I knew they were going to make an adjustment. So 
we had to be ready for that. So we made a few minor adjustments on the offensive end and defensively we wanted to clean a few things up um, going into the game. And, you know, I think we, we put ourselves in a position to win. We just didn't close out like we needed to. And in this game as well, going from Saturday to Sunday, the, the whistles came a little bit more frequently for, for both teams. So that had to be an adjustment for you and for Delaware as well. Yeah, uh, you know, for us, I thought it was, uh, you know, we got some early fouls and, you know, guys got a little, you know, passive and weren't as aggressive. But I thought on the other end, you know, we got in the bonus really early, uh, which was good for us. So we got to the free throw line a bunch and, um, you know, I thought defensively we kind of were on our heels a little bit and I think it affected us and helped Delaware get back in the game. You look at the shooting as well, really struggled in this game, even though you had great looks, especially from long range. The fourth game in, in seven days, you think it caught up to the legs a little bit of your kids? It probably played, uh, played a factor in it, but you know, I'm confident moving forward that well, if we get those type of looks, we're going to knock most of them down. Yeah, again, very good looks. Unfortunately, they weren't falling on Sunday. A different outcome for UNCW. Let's take a look now at our Rage Jewelers highlights from Sunday afternoon's game in Trask Coliseum. Three is no good. Tipped around right to Pridgen, who goes glass and scores. Opportunistic. Pulley stuck near sideline. Sim shot, big drive right baseline. Out to Ganson. Ganson three is all in. Ty Ganston, good snacks it out to Harvey. Harvey's got a big shot, long range three. Here is all net at the shot clock buzzer. Maybe that's what they need. Just a drive, gets it to the paint, dumps it to Pridgen. Pridgen, bank shot is good. Harvey, Harvey will drive in. Harvey off the glass and good as he attacked Carr that time. Down the floor, right side, Ganson. Ganson runs into Asamoah. The shot is good, I don't know how. It just went up. After the contact, drives in, fades away, and banks in the shot. Nice job by Sims. Drive right side of Boggs. Out front, Okaru. Back to Boggs. Boggs open. Three on the way is good. Jake Boggs, a big three there. Just Out to Okaru, right back to Sims. Sims from the free throw line, and it's good for Jalen Sims. And for UNCW, Okaru has it out front for the Seahawks. Floater with the right hand is good. Mike Okaru, Wyatt Knight offensively, just six points. She drives baseline, double team comes, bounces to Ganson. Ganson shot up and in. Great recognition by Pridgen as he was double teamed. Drives right baseline, out to Ganson. Ganson three is on net. Good start for him, he leads UNCW with eight. Does it? Sims, right block to Dodd. Finds Pridgen, Pridgen redirects and scores off the glass. Five. Gets it to the paint, dumps it to Pridgen. Pridgen, bank shot is good. A good job to use his body to time. Sims keeps it, drives it in, leans in after the spin, no good. Tip up for Boggs on the right side. Right now from beyond the arc. Driving it, Sims misses right side. Well, 67-62, the final score there you see. Both teams kind of, the, the numbers down a little bit, back-to-back -back games. And I thought another adjustment, Coach, both teams did a good job in the leading scores from Saturday. Sims struggled a little bit. Dylan Painter was quiet for the most part in this game as well. And again, both teams, it's a chess match when you look at the back-to-back -back games. Yeah, you know, uh, going into the game, I knew that Allen, their uh, point guard, combo guard, was going to come back in round two and be extremely aggressive. And, you know, what a good player he is. He, you know, hit some big shots down the stretch and, and kind of finished us off. Um, so we did a really good job on Dylan Painter. Uh, but he broke loose late in the game when they needed him the most. Um, we have to learn from it and get better from it and, and close the game out better than what we did. Hey, I mentioned Ryan Allen, 25 points to lead all scorers in this game for UNCW. Four in double figures. Ty Gadsden led the way with uh, 14 points. Also, 38 consecutive made free throws now for him. A school record here at UNCW. He's been very consistent, to say the least, from the strike. Yeah, you know, Ty's a really good shooter. Um, you know, most good shooters that you know shoot it well from the free throw line. And he's went up to the line and knocked his free throws down. Hopefully that can give him some confidence, uh, you know, going into the next game to be able to shoot the ball better from behind the arc. Yeah, from the free throw line, I think he's fourth best in the country right now in free throw percentage. So Ty Gass in a big game from that standpoint for UNCW. Unfortunately, the setback for the Seahawks. They go one and one on the weekend against the Hens from Delaware. We'll take a break here on the other side. It's a day in the life of a Seahawk basketball player. Jalen Sims will show us that when we return.
cool Bud Light, Bud Light, Celtic hip. Bay windows, got two. Nice tuck pointing hip. Retractable awning here, like it. Got the nice edging on the grass here. Edge the grass nice hip. Ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light, Celtic hip. Got a white breasted nut hatch hip. Quality. That's what you'll find at the Harris Teeter Butcher's Market. The best quality meats. From our tender verified beef, fresh chicken, and delicious pork, to kebabs and gourmet burgers. Perfect for your favorite recipes or special occasion. The Butchers at Harris Teeter. Ready, knowledgeable, and happy to serve you. And that's something you won't find everywhere. You can't know someone has COVID-19 just by looking at them. But you should know that everyone who wears a mask has a reason to fight it. Whatever your reason, get behind the mask. What's up, guys? This is Jalen Sims of UNCW Basketball. Today, I'm just walking you through a day in the life of what it's like to be a student athlete here at UNCW. Right now, I'm about to head in for my workout at 9.15. The first group is working out at 8.15, and my group works out right after them. We just finished the workout. Uh, about to head and get breakfast right now. Got some free time right now. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys some facilities at UNCW. We are grateful to have such great facilities here at UNCW. And right now I'm gonna show you guys Trash Coliseum. practice, we work out, we play our games. I love it here. Uh, I can't wait to play here this year. This is our uh, SAS center right here. This is our student athlete support services center where we uh, can study, print papers, or talk to our academic advisor. Our in particular is Shannon. So I'm just going to show you guys, give you a quick tour of what the building looks like. We have access to computers in case we need to print things. Also a study area in case we need to study for a test or just have some chill time. And also I think I see Shannon here with uh, Ty G, so I'm gonna see what they're doing. Just coming to say what's up. How you guys? Good, how yeah. are you? How you doing? This is our media room where we have interviews and talks to the media. And this is where we have post-game interviews where we also talk to media after our games. All right, right now I'm gonna show you guys our locker room complex. Here we are, we're walking to the film room right now. In the film room, this is where we watch film on practice, games, and scout for the opponent. We all do that right here. I'm gonna show you guys the actual locker room area right now. And this is our locker room. This is where we change, get ready for practice and for games. And right here, this is where we prepare, prepare for our games too as well. We come in here, this is our lounge area right here. This is where we chill, hang out. Some guys nap, some guys just wanna watch TV, eat a snack, maybe even play Xbox. This is a really great picture of Travis Coliseum. Uh, they're playing Charleston right now, which is our rival. And you can just see our fan base, how big our fan base is. And it's just a great place to play. I mean, just look at the picture. It's awesome. We got one last stop, and I'll show you guys the weight room. And this is our Seahawks Home Center. We have a great uh, strength staff that keeps us in shape and keeps our body looking fit. 
our Gatorade Center. Um, right here is where we have our smoothies, our protein shakes before or after our workout. And up here on the monitor is where we normally get our workouts um, from. And this, right here, this is the golf team's workout. And right now, the golf team is in here right now. I want to introduce you guys to our strength coach, Brad Moore. I love him. Great dude. Yo, Brad, how you doing? What's up, Jalen? Oh my God. You good? What you got going on today? Just working on some programming. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. My body's feeling good. That's good. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Thank you guys for joining us today. I uh, can't wait for the season to get started. I can't wait to see you guys this year. Go Seahawks. Hey guys, so currently it's about 12.50. I just woke up from my nap. I'm um, about to eat lunch, watch a little bit of film. Then we got practice in about uh, an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm ahead to the training room after that and then get ready for practice. See you guys then. It's about 2.30 right now. I just got to the gym, we about to warm up and then we got practice. You and gathered, make each occasion's We're keeping safe and personal, answering all you to the perfect present of for over 70. Family always makes moments together. You dance at Reed's Doom, you'll feel. In the truck game, greatness is defined by a relentless commitment to the customer. Forged over decades, built by a team resolute in helping you achieve your greatness. Experience this award-winning lineup today. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years straight and counting. Now get a well-equipped 2020 F-150 with up to 10,531 in total savings, only at your Carolina Ford dealer. Bring you back here. Time now for the Logan Holmes Play of the Week. It was a big one on Saturday to help the Seahawks get that win against the Blue Hens. Let's take a look at our Play of the Week. Okaru right side. Right corner gas to try to answer from green. He does. Gas in a huge drive in. Hang in the air. Has to play. Once again, our Logan Holmes play of the week, Jake Boggs. It seems like he has a big three in a lot of games throughout his career. Just a sophomore right now, but this was a big one to put the Seahawks up for good at 70-68 to on Saturday. They never look back after that. Jake Boggs providing us our Logan Holmes play of the week. That brings us now to our Carolina Four Dealers player of the week. And once again, Mike Okaru is that. Coach, he's becoming one of your most consistent players, your point guard. But he does everything right now. He can score. He can distribute. He rebounds the basketball as well. I mean, he's becoming a go-to guy on this team. No, I don't think he's, he's worried about, you know, any of that. You know, I think his main focus is going out and playing hard. And, and, you know, I try to get all of my guys to understand that if you play hard, it's amazing what can happen for you. And that's exactly what he's doing. And he's filling up the stat sheet. And, you know, he's doing exactly what I need him to do as one of my senior leaders. Yeah, again, it's no wonder he was the first Seahawk to have a triple-double when he did that last year because he does a little bit of everything. He's not worried about things. And, 
And as a senior on this team, I think he took it personal the losses last year. He's out to prove something this year. He is. You know, Mike wants to win. And, you know, he's one of those guys that's always in the gym working on his game and asking questions. And when we're talking to him, he's looking at us in our eyes. And, you know, whatever we can do to help him, you know, he's open to it. And he just wants to win. Kind of a, a reserve type of guy, but I'm sure you want him to be a leader and a vocal guy on the court as your point guard as well. Are you seeing him maybe improve in that area as well? He is, and that's not who he is naturally. Um, you know, and I told him that. You know, I know you're not going to be a guy that's, that's rah-rah and, and talking all the time, but I need you to work on talking a little bit more every day and, and being an extension of me and the coaching staff, and he's done a really good job with that. Yeah, really good week for him as well. Playing really well in the four conference games so far this season is Mike Okaru, this week's Carolina Four Dealers Player of the Week. We'll take a break here, take a look at our conference standings, and look ahead to what's ahead for UNCW this week as they're back home in Trash Coliseum. Stay with us. We're back to wrap things up next on this week's edition of the Seahawk Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle. Okay. One and at reads.com to find the perfect with Lang Jewelry Expert shipping, and be, you'll be confident for her as trusted jeweler for Reed's Jewelers will feel like family after she says yes. Well, as we bring you back, we take a look at the standings here. And as you see in the top, Northeastern no longer undefeated. They go 1-1 one one over the weekend, but still in first place at 7-1 in the conference standings. There's still a lot of basketball to be played. And, Coach, as you look at the teams that are on pause and, and all the games that have been postponed or, or canceled, it's going to come down to winning percentage, not necessarily you know, your overall record because it, you don't see everybody playing 18 games at this point. Right, and I think that's the best way to do it. Um, you know, there's so much basketball left. and. What we're going to do is just focus on getting better um, this week, work on ourselves. We'll get ready for Hofstra for sure, but work on, and I always talk to them on game day, let's just go 1-0 and today. Uh, we'll worry about, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, go on 1-0 and uh, playing the right way, and that's my main goal for our guys and, and for this program is to get to a point where we're playing championship level basketball uh, on a consistent basis. And I think if we do that, everything else will take care of itself. And we did find out this week that one of those James Madison games will be made up. It'll be here at Trans Coliseum February 9th at 4 o'clock for UNCW and the Dukes. So they'll get at least one of those games played. But let's look at the, this week's schedule delivered by Papa John's. And it is Hofstra coming to town, the preseason favorite to win this league. And uh, playing some good basketball right now. Similar to you, they don't go deep. You know, they have more players maybe available, but they stick to their five more or less. So their guys are playing 30 plus minutes. Is that a plus to kind of match up with a team that's similar from that regard? I don't know if it's a plus. Uh, you know, these games come down to who wants some more, uh, in my opinion. You know, no matter if you're playing five, six, seven guys, whoever wants it more uh, is, is going to be the team that is successful. Uh, I think, you know, for us, just getting healthy and getting to a point where we can have um, productive practices with you know 10 people because right now we're only practicing with eight guys and a couple of our coaches are helping us out in practice but uh, just getting to a point where we can practice 
consistently and get better at the stuff that you know we need to get better at. I know you're practicing against a, a two-three zone, which you'll see a lot from a Hofstra throughout this ball game. What makes their two-three zone different than what you saw from Delaware over the weekend? I think it's a, it's more of a matchup, Mike. You know, some people uh, try to overthink it and try to overcomplicate things, but. What I'm going to be focused on and what me and my coaching staff have talked about is a lot of ball and player movement. Um, you know, we'll put them in different spots, but just moving the ball and moving their body and not settling for uh, semi-contested three-pointers and playing inside out. Uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, we'll get some good work on that tomorrow and the rest of the week and put together a good game plan and we can go out and execute it. So it's UNCW and Hofstra Saturday and Sunday, both games 1 o'clock in Trask Coliseum. We'll have those for you starting at 1245 on Flow Sports and on the Breeze as well. So a tough test here at home, but it is at home, and we'll see what happens for UNCW against the Hofstra Pride. Coach, best of luck here this week. Thank you, Mike. That is the KO Sido. I'm Mike McCarroll for Jeremy Sullivan, our producer as well. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next week for another edition of the Seahawk Basketball Show featuring Takeo Siddle.